swear to protect the travelers of the night and bring my vengeance to those who would do them harm. Yeah. Rise. rise and live again as my fist of vengeance, as my night. This is the most brutal TV series by Marvel. Moon Knight is here. The protagonist Stephen wakes up from his home. Strangely, he finds himself locked to the bed. Stephen carefully checks the fine sand beside the bed and the gap under the door. It seems he is making sure he didn't go out. Stephen is a sales clerk at a museum gift shop, but he dreams of becoming a museum guide. Just as he is explaining to a little girl, he is discovered by his boss, Donna. Donna always purposely mispronounces Stephen's name. This is a little trick Americans use to display aggression. She reminds him not to forget the steakhouse date on Friday night. Stephen checks three items. The other party confirms. He doesn't know when he became so good with women. At that moment, Donna comes over to mock Stephen, asking why a vegetarian would go to a steakhouse. Hearing this, Stephen feels like laughing inexplicably. Some people in the country please do not take this personally. When Stephen leaves work at night, Wendy also gets his name wrong. Street performers share their experiences. When going to bed at night, Stephen locks himself up again. But when he opens his eyes, he finds himself lying on a strange lawn, with blood at the corner of his mouth and his chin dislocated. A strange voice starts to sound. Surrender the body to Mark. Even more confusing for Stephen is the golden scarab in his pocket. Suddenly, a sinister figure appears behind him, but disappears when Stephen turns around. However, there's a castle behind Stephen. People on the castle inexplicably start shooting at him. Though he doesn't understand what's happening, escaping is crucial. He runs towards a nearby town. Stephen approaches the crowd in the town, where a man from the crowd steps forward. He is Arthur, the leader of the sect. Today, he is conducting a trial of the deity Amit. A man steps forward and shakes hands with Arthur. Arthur's arm tattoo of scales starts to sway. The man is deemed good. Stephen thinks this isn't necessarily a good thing. Then, an old woman steps forward, and the scales turn red. She instantly turns into a corpse. At this moment, a mercenary tells Arthur there's a problem with the deal. Arthur shouts something only the cultists understand. Everyone instantly kneels. Only Stephen is slow to react, exposing himself. Arthur demands the sacred scarab from Stephen. Stephen questions, why would I need this thing? Take it. But the mysterious voice stops him again and controls Stephen's body, preventing him from handing over the scarab. The mercenaries have to restrain Stephen to take it forcefully. As the scarab is taken away, Stephen suddenly loses consciousness with his eyes rolling back. When Stephen wakes up again, his face is covered in blood and all the mercenaries around him are knocked down. He holds the blood-stained scarab in his hand. Stephen doesn't have time to think. He frantically runs to a car and starts to flee. A mercenary jumps on and struggles with Stephen. Another group of mercenaries prepares to shoot him. At this moment, Stephen passes out again. When he awakes, he finds a stone gun in his hand, and the nearby mercenaries are no longer moving. Fortunately, the mysterious voice warns him, avoiding a collision with a lumber truck. More mercenaries catch up and surround him. Stephen loses consciousness once more. When he wakes up again, another car has been dealt with, but eventually, he is cornered by the mercenaries. Just as he is about to surrender, wood from the lumber truck rolls down and flips the mercenaries over. As the timber is about to hit him, he suddenly wakes up in bed. After confirming he is still locked up, Stephen awkwardly laughs, thinking it was all a nightmare. But strange things start to happen. First, his single Siamese fighting fish becomes a pair. When Stephen rushes to his date, he finds out it's already Sunday. He orders a well-done steak for himself. Disheartened, he returns home, where Stephen accidentally discovers scratch marks on the floor. He moves the table and steps on it, finding a loose wooden slat. He pulls out a cell phone from behind the space. The most contacted person in the phone is someone named Layla. Just as he decides to call her, Layla calls. Layla loudly demands to know where he's been. Stephen responds to Layla with a question. Who do you think I am? What do you mean, who? What's wrong with you, Mark? Just then, the call is disconnected. As Stephen is about to call back, another voice appears around him, advising him not to continue investigating. At this point, Stephen seems to have a hallucination. He sees himself in the mirror, shaking his head at him. Then, the lights in the room start to flicker. Stephen rushes out in panic. He tries to take the elevator to the ground floor. But the elevator suddenly stops on the second floor. The elevator doors open. He sees in the hallway's reflection, a monstrous figure approaching him. The approaching monster is the moon god Khonshu. Stephen is terrified and collapses on the ground. Then, Khonshu suddenly turns into an old lady. Stephen awkwardly explains that he is looking for his contact lens. At this moment, the elevator brings him back to his apartment on the fifth floor. While Stephen is questioning this, Khonshu appears again. Stephen is so frightened that he wakes up on a bus, and it seems like the moon god Khonshu has been following him. When Stephen is driving, he discovers that Arthur is actually tracking him. Stephen rushes into the museum's exhibition area in panic, only to find that Arthur is already there waiting for him. He tries to seek help from the museum security, but finds out that the guard and many others around are followers of Arthur. Stephen tells Arthur that he does not have his sacred scarab. Arthur explains that the scarab is of Amit, the creature on the stone column, known to the world as the first monster. But to Arthur's cult, Amit is a god. At this moment, the entire museum's lights flicker. Arthur looks at Stephen and says, Until there's nothing left but a hollow shell.
Then, he subjects Stephen to the trial of Amit. Resultingly, the scales on Arthur's arms swing wildly. Arthur looks at this and shakes his head, ultimately having to release Stephen. As a result, Stephen diligently scans to start his workday again. He is truly a hard-working employee. In the evening after work, Stephen hears the sound of a dog barking inside his palm. He initially thinks a visitor forgot their pet dog, but instead sees a bald water monkey. With quick movements, Stephen finally manages to run into the bathroom and lock the door. But as the monster is about to break through, at that moment, the strange voice speaks up again. Another personality, Mark, appears in the mirror. Mark seriously advises Stephen that he should let him take control of the body. You need to give me control. You understand? What control of what? What are you talking about? That thing's about to break through the door. We're out of time. Stephen has no time to chat, muttering to himself that he's going to die. Seeing Stephen's frightened state, Mark seriously says, You're not going to die. Let me save us. 史蒂文最终还是选择了相信自己。白色的卫生纸开始包裹他的身体。这时，怪物也破门而入，冲向了史蒂文。好在变身已经完成。暴躁的卫生纸代言人，月光骑士闪亮登场。Stephen wakes up from the dream again. This time, he's certain there's another personality. Stephen rushes to the museum to check the situation from the day before. He finds that the bathroom has been sealed off. The security is about to check the surveillance. Stephen insists on going with them. He warns them they might see something unbelievable, but they only see Stephen himself on camera. There's no water monkey chasing him, and Stephen looks directly at the camera as he leaves. Stephen is sure that it was Mark controlling the body at that time. The bathroom has been violently destroyed. The museum doesn't want to press charges against Stephen. But he's certain to lose his job. After being fired, Stephen goes back to the square to talk to the statue people again. At this moment, Stephen remembers the keys he found along with a phone. He locates the chain warehouse. To his surprise, the front desk clerk recognizes him and even remembers his storage unit number 43. Led by the clerk, Stephen arrives at unit 43. Inside the warehouse, he only sees a cot and some outdoor gear. On a box by the bed is a black bag. Opening it, Stephen finds several stacks of cash. What surprises him more is a gun pulled from inside. He also finds an American passport. Passport with Mark's name on it, and at the bottom of the bag, he discovers the sacred scarab. Accidentally, Stephen activates the beetle, which opens its wings and hovers, pointing in a direction like a compass. In the wall's reflection, Mark appears. He advises Stephen to go lie down and sleep to let him handle some things. Angry, Stephen demands Mark to tell the truth. Tell me what it is you are. What are you? You sure you want to know? Yes, buddy. Yes. I serve can't you? I'm his avatar, which means you are too. Sort of. We protect the vulnerable and deliver conscious justice to those who hurt them. Stephen exclaims that the whole situation is absurd, claiming all he did was eat a steak. At this, Mark continues to persuade, insisting Stephen let him take control of the body. Stephen, frustrated and feeling pressure, picks up the black bag to take to the police. But as soon as he steps out of the storage unit, the corridor lights begin to flicker. Kanshu rushes towards him from a distance. Stephen finally manages to run out and collides with a woman on a motorcycle. This woman is Layla from Mark's phone. She tracked Mark's phone to find this place. Layla complains about Mark not contacting her, seemingly unaware of Stephen's existence. Stephen asks Layla why she's worried about him and discovers that Layla is Mark's wife. Stephen is secretly pleased to learn he apparently has a wife, but Layla is confused about Stephen's access. Stephen asks Layla to take him back to his apartment, where he tries to explain everything. It seems like Layla's first time at Stephen's apartment. She's somewhat hurt and asks, "Are you living with someone else?" Stephen quickly explains it was left to him by his mother. Surprising Layla even more, she remarks it's good that he's made up with her, indicating the other personality doesn't have a good relationship with Mark's mother. Mark appears again. 